Okay, in this video, uh, we're going to continue our processing. So what we've done is we've downsampled and we've filtered the data. Now we need to create events in our EG file. Basically, we're going to tag each trial. So let me show you. If you plot channel data scroll, you'll see the EEG data. Here's all the channels, and of course we have time on our x-axis, and if you keep scrolling, you'll see various events. Well, what we want to do is categorize and classify those events uh, to ultimately create our ERPs. So we're going to be doing that in ERP Lab. So what you do is you go to, the first step to do this is go to ERP Lab, create an event list. So you're going to go to event list, create EEG event list, and you'll get this box that'll pop up. And what you're going to do is you're going to export the event list to a file. And we're going to name it by the subject number. So it's going to be 101 and then elist.txt. This is all in your co in your uh, protocol. Uh, but you're going to type in the subject number there and you'll click create. Now what that does is that creates an event list file uh, for this data set. So first let me save it and I'll show you what that file looks like. So we're going to, it didn't save. So 101. 256 hertz uh, filtered, but now we've added events. So we're going to add the event there and click OK. So let me show you that event list. So if you notice over here, you have 101 E list. That's what we created. So if we double click on it, what we get is we get a listing of each event code, right? Those were the little bars, or that's the communication from our recording computers. And we have a code for what the trial type is and what the response was and so on. So this is the study phase and that continues for many trials. And then we'll see a boundary here. That's where the recording soft that's where the recording software paused in between study and test. And then it resumed. And so we have a test. So this is our first test trial. That's a code for the type of trial that it is. This is an event code for what the response was. So 51, 52 in this case, we're older new judgments. And then we have uh, 103 is our confidence level. So we have 100, 101, 102, 103 are our confidence levels. And then we have the next trial. So this continues. This is all of our event codes that have been created. And you'll see another boundary. And this starts our second memory test. So we had a study phase, two separate memory tests in this particular study. So that's fantastic, that's good. In some cases, that's all we need is to create that event list. But in this study, what we're gonna do is we're gonna recode that event list. We go back in time and we'll recode the study items to identify which ones were subsequently remembered and which ones were subsequently forgotten. So the way to do that is you're gonna run this program down here and you would have in your protocol something similar, similar pro program to run. This program, when you type in the subject number, in this case, we would type in 101. It will open up all of those behavioral data files and figure out what happened on each trial and whether or not that item was later remembered or not remembered and create a new event list. And it'll create this new event list and call it 101 elist r automatically. So I've already done that part of this. You just basically run a program and this file will magically appear. Now, if you double click on it, we can look at how it's different. So it's going to recode everything based on, or recode some things based on whether or not they remembered it or whether or not they forgot it. So you can see here they remembered it. Remember, remember, remember. Here's one where they forgot and it changes the code if they forgot it. So it's going to go back through and edit this uh, event list file. And if we go down and we can see here it changes the boundary conditions and then it labels the, puts labels in for our old and new items on the memory test. So that's what the recoding does. Now, what we have to do in EEG Lab, let me bring that window up, is we have to tag that new event list with our EEG data file. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go into ERP Lab again, and we go to Event List, and we're going to import the event list from a text file. And as you might guess, we're going to select 101 elist R, and that's going to tag our new event, recoded event list, into our existing data set. So it's asking you, hey, do you want to uh, replace or overwrite the events? And the answer is yes, we do. And it's going to ask us to save it. So we're going to save it. And when we save it, we're going to save it with an event R so that we know that it's been recoded at this stage. So we have recoded events in our data file. So that's fantastic. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to assign uh, various uh, epics to bins. So we're going to, part of how we decide what 
items to sort and stuff. We have to decide this in advance, but we're going to form ERPs based on certain trials in our data set. So this is what we mean by putting them in various bins. Each ERP essentially would be one bin of items to average across. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to go to ERP lab, assign bins using this bin lister routine. Now the good news is for each study we decide in advance, like I said, how we want to sort our ERP. So this is our file here. All you'll have to do, this should be populated, all you'll have to do is check and make sure that's the right file, the right bin lister file. If not, you would select it. Again, this is in the protocol. And the other thing that you'll, the only thing that you'll change is down here in the text file. For each subject, we create uh, its own bin list output uh, just so we can go back to examine it if we need to. And we'll click run and it's going to create that bin list file and it's going to, oops, and it's going to attach it to our EEG, but we're going to save it and I'll show you that file get, that gets created. Now it's been binned, so we add bin to the file name and you're going to click OK. And you'll notice that it has this uh, bin list data file has been now created. So it's been binned. Now we're going to extract the epochs uh, that have been binned. Let me show you what the data look like. So this is still in its raw form. So we have uh, an event here and then we have a period of time and we have a response and then you can see there's a whole bunch of time before the next event. What we need to do is pull out our individual epics and cut out all of this, the data that we're not interested in. And so what we're going to do is the way we do that is we go to ERP lab and we extract the bin based epics. So this is where we're creating epics of the same size that essentially mean each individual trial. So we're going to extract bin-based epics. Again, this one should be auto-populated for you, but check the settings in the protocol. So we're going to create an epic that is minus 200 milliseconds before the stimulus is presented, 1500 milliseconds afterwards. That's a prototypical one that I use for recognition studies. So those are our epics. We're going to run it. And as you might imagine, it's going to ask us to save it. And because it's been epic, we're going to add epic to the file name and we're going to click OK and save that. Let me show you what it looks like real quick. So we'll go to plot channel data scroll. Now we don't have the that extra time stuff. Time zero is when the stimulus was presented. We have 200 milliseconds before, 1500 milliseconds afterwards. So the total length here is 1700 milliseconds. But then we have the next epoch. And you can see it's bend. So this was assigned to bend three. This was assigned to bend one and so on. So we're getting that one closer step to uh, making ERPs. Essentially, we're going to average ERPs based on our bins. Um, so that's the end for this step. In the next step, we're going to remove artifacts using ICA.